Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm totally out of breath because I'm playing like an illegal nine right now. I'm supposed to be working this morning, but before work, because I have some time in the office, I came out to play nine holes with some uh, mini tour players from the Southern California area, and I was late because I had to get ready for work and ready for golf and other excuses, but so I had to run from paying, which I stood in line to the second hole, so I've done effectively like a 1,000 yard dash to get out here. And I'm on the course, so I don't really know what kind of vlog this is going to be, but it will be uh, it will be fun. I'll shoot some swings at these guys and maybe talk a little bit. Let's see. So this is it. This is the second hole at Skylinks, a par five, uh, 550 yards or so from the Black Tees where we're playing. I had to run about, yeah, about a thousand yards between the uh, the parking lot and everything else to this point. I saw the guys out in the fairway and I teed off to uh, the right center of the fairway. Very good tee shot. You know, sometimes it works out that way. We don't want to count on it though. And then I hit an extremely thin three wood to this position here. So I have a up and down chance for a birdie. If you guys saw the pitching prescription, you'll notice, you'll uh, kind of recognize this no turning cast feeling to this pitch shot here. Kind of letting it all out. That was really great. I just landed it about a foot short. Okay guys, so after running, I thought I forgot my tripod, but I remembered it. And uh, so we're on the second hole, so this would be an eight hole vlog. I hit a good drive and then I hit it to here, so I have that for birdie. A little recap there, so then uh, had this for birdie. The greens were extremely slow. That was a bad read though. The greens were extremely slow and in horrible condition actually. Uh, it's kind of the, uh, the buzz around town right now is how bad the greens are at Skylink. So, Anyway, so this is Ryan Carter. Ryan has full status on the Australian tour, and he also plays on this thing called the One Asia Tour. He's got a really, really great swing that we're gonna check out in slow motion in a little bit. And this is my friend, a guy I've been playing golf with for a long time, Eric Frazetta, who is also a tour player, plays on this thing, an in independent tour called the Bow Tour out here, and also plays in a bunch of other independent uh, golf tournaments trying to get his way eventually to the PGA Tour and that's Brendan DeVore trying eventually to get his way to maybe the US Mid-Am. That would be uh, an amazing, amazing feat if I could do that sometime in the next 10 years. Uh, so here I am with an 8 iron and I got kind of crossed up there. Let my backswing get a little too fast and uh, when it gets that fast it carries me on into a super long backswing. Ryan hitting a mid iron onto the green, uh, hit it about 15 feet short right. So like I said, the greens were in bad shape and sometimes you can hit good drives when you just run from the parking lot onto the second hole, but very hard to get your touch shots in order when you're um, and you've messed up your routine that badly before the round. Ryan missed his birdie, but made his par. And then zipping through this, this is me for par. Missed that on the amateur side. So one over after two holes, moving on to the fourth hole, because I didn't get to play the first hole. So uh, yeah, you can see that area down to the right, that super thick area, that is an absolute no man's land. And I think Ryan knew that and he hit a big slice into the left, uh, not even rough, the left trees. Eric hit a great drive here, up the right hand side, really controlled, he knew what he wanted to do. Okay, this is a little contest we're gonna have here. This is Brian, a really nice guy and a subscriber to Be Better Golf. Rewind this video and check out this slow motion swing and who can give Brian the best advice of how he can get better? He's about an 11 handicap and uh, looking to get better. He has his club championship this weekend. That's why he was trying to get out and play with a lot of good golfers. That was a, a really great drive. My best drive of the day, really. 
which was with that three wood, really good. Let's check out my swing in slow motion. So watch, I kind of tuck it under a little bit, but I got nicely deep. I got deep enough there that I was able to just work the club out, diagonally out towards the ball, which helps your sequence. So my swing thought recently has been uh, this thing called drift and sink. So I'm just trying to sink it up on the way through. Ryan hit a, uh, not Ryan, uh, Eric hit a punching eight iron, really good, to about seven feet. And then I hit a great eight, eight iron as well, to about 15 feet. Well, see that little bow in, the t in my wrist at the top? That kind of shallows the club for me in transition when I do that just a little bit, and uh, hit a great shot there. Ryan hit his out of the trees, had a line, and uh, two putted for par. This is for mine, for birdie. Yeah, the putting stroke is not too good. You know, when I have a tournament coming up or something, all I do is practice putting, really. But when I don't have a tournament coming up, all I do is practice full swing. Uh, it's Pretty not pretty. really by design, it's just the way it works out. When you're in a tournament, you know putting is so peripheral, that's all you really care about. And otherwise, when you're just trying to get better, you just weren't thinking about full swing. So here's uh, Eric Frazetta. So watch Eric's hat here and his body, his hips. See, there's just the slightest bit of fall towards the target, and then he catches it up with very fast hands. He's a really great ball striker. Now here's Ryan's swing. Ryan's swing is probably one of my favorite swings I've had on the channel. Super interesting. Watch, extremely wide on the way back, kind of Bubba-esque. Does not set the wrist very aggressively at the top, and then there's no fall towards the target. And then he just uh, drives everything forward. Super forward ball position as well, with that about six iron, about uh, 180 yards. And I took, again, too long of a backswing, which then gets my arms up too steep. And then when they go up too steep, they have to go down too steep. And uh, took a big divot there and came up short. So the drill that came along with the pitching prescription is this one here, where you hold your, your uh, rear shoulder to feel everything continuing on to move. And that is, uh, it's hard to see, but that is a very big slope going down towards that bunker. And that was a pretty good shot to get it to where I did. You can see how aggressively Ryan had to swing to get it out of that rough and hit it to about five inches. He saved his par. Great putting, a great stroke there. Just very, very hard to hit it hard enough on these extremely slow greens. All right, so we got our, uh, our aerial view here, par five. Dog leg to the right, and let's switch from the virtual world to the real world. And Eric just got a little in front of that one, I think, and pulled it to the left. Okay, so let's check this out. There used to be this teacher that, that had this thing called reverse the curse, I mean, maybe Jeff Ritter, maybe somebody else. Watch, his hands go high, and then they go low. And then when they're going lower, they get more shallow, and then he can work the club diagonally out to the ball aggressively, which also helps your sequence. That's a great ball. And it, uh, then you don't have to drift on it, as far as target words. Now, with the reverse the curse thing, and the Zep analyzer, and a bunch of other people have kind of seen that, my hands get uh, higher in transition when they should be shallowing in transition. Oh, good draw. Awesome draw really good, from that uh, uphill lie there. So this is, Eric was right there to the, to the left of the bunker that's uh, in the middle of the screen. And I was just to the left of where Eric was. And there's the green up there. So I could not try to shape this. I had to go over this tree. This is a six iron, which I have to get up in the air kind of quick. I like hitting from uphill lies, though. Kind of sucked it in on the backswing, but I uh, hit it really nicely out into the fairway. Ryan hit kind of a bleeder. All right, guys, so we're out here at Skylinks where, we, where you saw uh, all the Long Beach Open footage from and everything. And uh, I'm playing with a friend of a friend and a new friend of mine, Ryan Carter, who I don't really know anything about. So let's get to know Ryan a little bit. <laughs> I know that you're, you're a golf pro. What does that mean? Well, like you're a playing pro, a teaching pro? pro? Yeah, I don't teach. I've, uh, people have asked me for lessons, but uh, I'm not really good at that. <laughs> right, so right. I'd rather play. But. I got my own problems. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So where where do you play, where do you play golf mostly? Um, 
When I'm in town, I play out at uh, Candlewood Country Club or right. Industry Hills or Hacienda. And tournament there. golf, where, where do you Tournament where do you, golf, where do you I'm, play uh, I have full status in Australia right now, so I'm playing down there and uh, also one Asian, so. Yeah, I've heard playing the, the Australian tour and, and events in Australia is a really nice experience. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's uh, some of the best courses in the world. Yeah. Uh, the tour is really, really well run. Mm -hmm. And uh, some big events. I think we'll have four or five co sanctions here this year. So, right where the money on on whatever yeah, that you get winning all the those top guys mm -hmm. and Adam Scott. And all you can even get into up. like the British Open sure. by winning some of those. Yeah, that's that's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Now Australia, they have a little different attitude about golf. It's a little bit more traditional. Yeah. A little bit more uh, conservative. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's they're not so much conservative. They like to have you know fun and there's. You know, there's there certain rules, but right. traditional golf, meaning, you know, the no golf carts. It's Straight up, just, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So we'll get to know Ryan a little bit more. Personally, I have about a 50-yarder here. Let's see if I can pull off something decent. I've got 60 yards after that good six iron on a par five. Try to land it right on top of it. 60-degree wedge. Yep, this is one of my new wedges that I have. I'm going to be doing a what's in the bag pretty soon, but this is one of my new wedges. And you guys will see that since we did the sinking your swing video, I'm practicing these half shots a lot because they really Definitely help. Definitely a pitching swing. prescription swing there. Yeah, if you guys have that, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, I'm practicing these 100 yard five irons and also like 50 yard, 60 degree wedges. All these uh, half distance shots are just crucial to getting your swing synced up. It just really helps a lot. All right, Eric for birdie after kind of a lackluster chip there. So Eric makes a par, which is kind of like a half a bogey on this hole. And that's me for birdie. And again, I'm just hitting it about the line I want, but about a, I'm about a foot short all day. Oh, Rob. Ryan. Got rejected there a little bit by the uh, slow bumpy greens. All right, moving on to this is the number one handicap hole in the course. Dog leg left there. So here goes Ryan, and uh, he is extremely long. Uh, I would say about as long as Monty. It's hard to say until you see them playing next to each other. But uh, he hit that up the left hand side and actually sliced into the trees. Nah, it didn't slice, it overfaded anyway into the trees. This is a good drive here, just to let you guys know. Had a nice routine there as far as getting everything through. And then uh, really worked the hands. Uh, I didn't let my hips completely outrace me. I sunk the hands up with the rotation pretty well. And Eric had a good drive too, but it drew a little bit too much. He's actually gonna be under a tree. Eric, talk us through this cool shot right shot. here. Like, how far do you have? I have uh, 138 to the pin. So what are, you, what are you usually thinking, like, if this is like a tournament situation? Well, I don't think I have a full back swing here. So it's probably going to be like a low punch around it, because I don't think I can get it high enough right off the bat. Right. So you're just trying not to give yourself, like, be in a worse spot after yeah. this swing. Yeah. Just like short right to get spot. So you're kind of making up a new pin, a new target to go at. Right. Just visualize the shot and try to execute the best you can. So he's got a little bit of a restricted back swing here for sure. And this is an awesome shot. Oh, grab awesome right there. Shot. Really good. Worked out better than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, 11 feet's pretty good from where you are. <laughs> Eric says he always plays better when people are watching. Even though it doesn't seem like he's super gregarious about having the camera around, he actually likes it. All right, so I have a another eight iron that I'm just no, actually that's a nine iron, and uh, hit well, a that great was really shot. Good. You that's can right on it, uh, Monty on Be Better Golf Live last night. Monty was talking about the the golfer that uh, kind of takes it inside. He said it's not so much an, an issue of taking it inside. You really need to get it more vertical, more up off the ground. See how when it goes inside, it's just staying low to the ground. 
low and slow. So when I hit a good shot, I feel like I can give out some pop instruction. Yeah, that's definitely something I'm working on, getting more vertical in the backswing and then shallowing it in the transition. Okay, so Eric, uh, after his great shot, missed his birdie. This is me for, for birdie. I hit that so well, it kind of went further than I thought. Really, really, uh, I keep complaining about these screens. Anyway, who cares? All right, on to the eighth hole. This is a uh, shortish par four. Eric goes first, hit a great drive. Great ball there. Really well, well balanced. You can tell the difference between that one and the, the one he hit on the par five. And here's Ryan. Watch how wide he is on the backswing. Very athletic and uh, awesome, awesome posture. Does a lot of things well. Really, Beautiful really drive. wide on the transition. Kind of wimpy, but really good. <laughs> Being sarcastic, yeah. he absolutely crushed that. About 320. Uh, really hit a, a good draw down, down the left. And after seeing that, I was definitely trying to swing out of his shoes, and I got lucky that it hit away in the toe because it just kind of weakly sl sliced, but it stayed into the fairway. And I did the same thing that I did on the third hole. Yep, see, I let my body overtake that, and I blocked that out to the right. I'm in a tough spot, too. Eric is really super in balance. In the comments, tell me whose swing uh, Eric re reminds you of. I think kind of like a David Tom swing. So a uh, good wedge shot there for, for Ryan. Okay, so I'm on an extremely, extremely tight lie. You can see there's some repair work that's been done. Otherwise, I probably would have putted this. And I hit it okay, but I didn't account for how much I had to open the face to deal with the tight lie. And that took it out to the right, and that's my ball in the foreground. So after that awesome drive, Ryan only comes up with par, and no Eric, love. the greens are just not in a good enough shape to super attack. You can see my, my the line on my putter was face kind of left. And that was a pretty nasty stroke there, Brendan. Time to do about an hour and a half putting he's session coming up soon. 230 yard so par three here. Hybrid for Eric, long iron for Ryan. And uh, Eric hit that to about 20 feet and Ryan uh, hit it left into the bunker. Uh, Ryan went on to shoot 68 this day, I know that. I don't know what Eric shot, probably, probably somewhere about the same. I hit a good hybrid to, to the left. If you guys follow me on Instagram, go to Instagram and follow BB underscore golf show. This, this has gotten about 25,000 views. This up, well, I'll tell you now, it's an up and down by Ryan. Hit an awesome, awesome bunker shot. You can see, keep watching it. You can see it came out just a little bit. Where are you? Well, oh, there it is. Just a little bit right of the flag, but perfect distance control for a long bunker shot, which is hard to do. And this is about a 25 stepper here. So really far, about seven, no, no, not quite that much, more like a 60, 60 foot putt or so. Anyway, so uh, did not hit it hard enough, so hard like on these slow greens to hit it hard enough. Eric for birdie. No love at all. But made a great three, and speaking of great threes, uh, Ryan made a great three. He's not often in trouble, but his short game is so, uh, it's it just really tight. Burn the lip, that's it. That actually, I think, was a, uh, giving myself a par in the first, I think that's a 40. So that's it for me. And if you guys want to know the real difference between these guys, these professional golfers and me, is uh, I'm finishing nine holes and going to work. And they're finishing nine holes and playing the rest of the round. And then eating lunch and playing again. And then practicing after that. That really is a huge difference that you have to kind of put a reality check into it, but uh, did not putt well today. Did some things okay, but for just sprinting out of the course, sprinting out of the car onto the course with uh, zero warm up, I'm pretty happy with that not too bad hey everybody i wanted to let you know that available now on be better golf is this video right here in the corner sinking your swing 
It is a over hour long video with Monty and Dana Dahlquist and myself talking about sinking your swing. What is so important about sinking your swing? I mean, the single most important thing in the golf swing is linking your arms up to the rotation of your body. End of story. So this is really going to be the key for a lot of people to get better.